In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to engrave faster on your CNC with five simple tips. These are tips that I've picked up along the way after doing thousands of engravings on hobby CNC's and industrial CNC's. These are not only easy to apply, but save you a ton of machine time. And the last one fixed a mistake I've been doing for years. Let's get right into it. So the very first tip is going to be to increase your plunge rate. So I have a 60 degree V-bit chalked up in there and we're going to do two different engravings. We're going to do one engraving running at 60 inches a minute and a 15 inches per minute plunge rate and then a second engraving with a 60 inches per minute plunge rate. And I'm gonna show you how and why that affects it so much. Let's get to running it. So what makes a V-carve different than most other CNC tool paths is that a V-carve has a lot of vertical movement. So increasing the feed rate doesn't change as much as increasing the plunge rate. Because look how many times it has to go up and down, right? Now, whenever it's doing a profile cut, it only has to go down one time and the rest is then feed rate. So increasing the feed rate on a profile cut matters a lot, but on an engraving, the plunge rate technically matters more because of that part right there. Now, second thing is obviously you should increase feed rate, but if I were to run this at 400 inches a minute on the feed rate versus 60 inches a minute, the CNC is never gonna get all the way up to speed, right? It's never gonna reach that 400 inches a minute because it doesn't have enough room to travel. So staying in the range of 60 to 90 inches a minute on your feed rate is perfectly fine. I think it's done like that. So that engraving just got done two minutes and five seconds. So 60 inches per minute, 15 on the plunge, two minutes and five seconds. Now I'm gonna run it at the same exact feed rate, so 60 inches a minute, but I'm gonna increase that plunge rate to 60 inches a minute. So same feed rate and same plunge rate on this engraving. See how much faster that bit's getting to business? Now, once again, it matters because there's so many of those Z-axis movements in engravings. Now, this is on a small engraving, but imagine if you're doing like a prayer or a long saying, it starts to really affect this. And so this is definitely gonna speed up your times if you increase that plunge rate. So that, in, that second engraving only took a minute and 31 seconds. So the top engraving took two minutes and five seconds, bottom took a minute 31. So what is that? Quick math, was that 25% faster just because of that increase in plunge rate. Now let's go on to the next tip. So the next tip is increasing your final pass step over. Now this only comes into consideration whenever you're V carving bigger things, right? And these bigger things typically have a flat depth or they'd go straight through your board. And a flat depth is just when you tell your V-bit it can't go past a certain Z height, right? So the flat depth I have set right here is 0.15 inches. And so what a final pass step over is, is how much that bit moves over to kind of clean up the bottom of this. And so on this one right here, we have a 2% final pass step over and on this one, we actually have a 10% final pass step over. And so what these are gonna look like when all said and done, you see that this one has about 10 times the amount of lines. And that means that V-bit has a lot of different passes that clean up the bottom of this star. And when you increase that final pass step over, it has a lot less lines that clean up. So let's take this over to the CNC, cut it out so you can see it in real time. And I'll get the next one. Going. Yeah. 
So the time on the 2% step over was four minutes and the time on the 10% final pass step over was about 45 seconds. And so you're looking at about a five times faster to engrave something with a flat depth with a 10% step over. So I run about a 14 to a 15% step over whenever I'm doing epoxy inlays because I don't care how tall those little peaks are whenever that V bit's cutting it out. So that saves me a lot of time on my epoxy inlays. But yeah, so that's just a quick setting change. And once again, this only happens when you have that flat depth. It does not affect a small engraving because there's never a flat depth there. There's only a flat depth on these bigger things. So if you do set a flat depth, do check that final pass step over and adjust it because that may just speed up your engraving. Now, on to the next one. The next tip is to reduce your rapid Z clearance height. So that's a setting that controls how high this CNC hovers before it, it goes into your material and how high it picks up. So we're gonna go show you that setting real quick on programming, then we're gonna come back and run two different engravings with two different Rapid Z clearance heists to show you how different that really is. So this next setting is found on the material setup under your toolpath tab. And what this is, is your Rapid Z gaps above material. And so there's gonna be two settings here. And so a lot of people have this set at two inches and I will show you what that looks like whenever you're doing an engraving. But if there is no reason for it to go two inches above the material to move, you can set this at a half inch and set the plunge rate at 0.2 or even go down and set this at a quarter inch and have the plunge rate at 0.2 inches. And so whenever you do that, you're gonna to have to recalculate all your tool paths but it's going to greatly reduce your engraving time because it does not have to go up and down. So check out your rapid Z gaps above material underneath your material setup in your toolpaths tab. So let's go over to the CNC and I'll show you what a two inch clearance looks like and a quarter inch clearance looks like. Okay. And I'll get the next one going. So notice how tall it's picking up and then going down. Like that takes so much more time than just it hovering and quickly going. And if you're like me, it took me a long time to realize how high a CNC should be picking up before it does that and scaring the bejesus out of me. Now this one, notice how far it picks up before it travels to the next letter. So watch, it goes boom, boom, right? Boom, boom. That's going to dramatically increase your engravings. So if your CNC is picking up really high before it goes over, you want to decrease that. So this turned out really nice. And don't forget to do what the wood tells you to do, like and subscribe. The next tip is to not use a flat depth if at all possible. So whenever you use a flat depth, that's typically gonna be on like bigger engravings like this star or maybe you have a really big letter. Now my dad likes to do a flat depth of like an eighth inch on everything. So even if my dad engraves really big like he always does, Ryan is the best son ever, he still has that flat depth and so his engravings take a long time. So my advice to not try to do that as often as possible is make sure you have all the different types of bits, right? Whether it's a 90, a 60, or a 30 degree V-bit. That way, whenever you are doing an engraving and you have to have that flat depth because it's gonna go too deep, maybe you go from a 30 degree to a 90 degree V-bit and it's going to do it a little bit faster and you don't have to have that flat depth because when you have that flat depth, you have to have that final pass step over like I showed you right here on these stars. So if you want all three, we do have an engraving bit set on CICWorkshop.com. Now, on to the next tip. So this next tip I learned from Kyle Ellie with Learn Your CNC. He has courses over Aspire and VCarve Pro and they are absolutely amazing. So he did give me a 10% discount code for his course. Check that out in the description if you are interested. So what this tip is, is let's say you're engraving something like this, this home sweet home, and all is good in the world, right? But upon further inspection, you look and you have all these wavy lines, right? Well, all of those are gonna make that V-bit take a lot longer. So in the past, what you would do is you would grab an arc, 
drag it, redo this, and cut all those lines. And that takes a very long time, even on something this small. So instead, what Kyle showed me to fix all of these lines is that you come over here to this Curve Fit, and this is on VCarve Pro, any of the versions, or Aspire. You click that, you select BZ or Curves, you set your tolerance there, and whenever you click this and preview it, boom, it just cleaned up all of those lines. So you go from a crazy mess with a whole bunch of nodes to that, which is really good. So you go from this to that. And so that curve fit is going to save you a ton of time. So if you're about to engrave something, let's say even this text is, look at it and there's all these nodes in there and all those nodes are just gonna cause that engraving to take a little bit longer. So you go to curve fit, click, preview, boom, took out those nodes. Now you're gonna have a much faster engraving compared to what you previously had with all those other nodes. So thank you Kyle for this tip. And so I hope this tip helps you do those faster engravings. So as you just saw, removing those nodes does help a ton with engraving. Well, I hope these five tips helped. Let me know in the comments if you like these style of videos where I'm just giving tip after tip after tip, trying to help you guys. I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.